Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another awesome mental health check. Your struggle is part of your story, so celebrate every victory. Hallelujah. Okay, guys, so far from the responses that I've received from people on Messenger on Facebook, this has been quite, uh, let's see, how did they put it? quite an awesome series so far and I've only basically done two I believe um, and I'm on the third one today so I'm not okay but I want to be is the teaching that we're dealing with today and over the next few weeks anyway and today's actual teaching is called how do we become okay again so I think that this is uh, one of those types of teachings that is important if if no other word can be said about this it's important for you guys to listen to it and really take it in because it can and will make a huge impact on your life i'm not okay but i want to be and then how do we become okay again so that's what we're going to be doing so I'm going to be just, I try to give you guys a cue of what's happening and stuff like that as I do it. So I'm going to be praying right away. But before I do that, I just want to remind you guys, like and subscribe to our channel because, you know, it makes a big difference for us as YouTube content creators and uh, it changes the algorithms, all of those things. Uh, comment, let us know what you're thinking about things, what you would like to see us talk on. Like if you have a topic that is specific that you would like to see us, you know, discuss and uh, help you through or whatever, then let us know because we would love to do that. And yes, I'm still saying yes, because Mandy, as you can see, she's not with me yet. But it is coming so quickly that she will be feeling good enough to do that, to be part of this um, video, this YouTube, the vlog, whatever we want to call it. It's coming really close for her to be able to uh, be part of it again. And uh, get ready for that because I will, of course, be letting you guys know when she's going to be coming back. But also, she's going to be sharing her story and all of the things that she's gone through over this past little while in her mental health. And I think that it's going to make a big impact on you guys, the things that she has gone through. I mean, you guys already know that um, she is an addict. She is labeled with uh, DID. She has um, a few other things um, like stress, a lot of stress, obviously, but anxiety and ADHD and all of those things. Uh, she's been labeled with all those things and the things that she has done over this past little while, because I don't know, maybe some of you guys understand what it's like to just be on bed rest, but it is pretty tough. It's tough for what we would call the normal people, let alone somebody with mental health issues having to be on bed rest and stuff like that. So please be sure to stay tuned so you can be able to hear her uh, testimonies and her stories of how she made it through these things. And also we are going to probably be doing um, what's in she has a uh like a basically a it's called like a tool chest of all the things that help her mental health and she has made this chest it's it's really beautiful and there's some stuff in there that for her you know even just looking at it elicits memories or brings back memories and stuff like that for her to help her press forward and keep going on all the things that she needs to go on. So I think that that is spectacular. So be ready because we've got some really incredible content coming up uh, for you guys, but we're going to continue on with what we're teaching right now. I'm not okay, but I want to be. So you've just got me and that's okay too, because you know, Although I don't have all of the classes that Mandy has taken with regards to mental health and stuff like that, I do have a little bit of knowledge with regards to it because it is, excuse me, 
<laughs> I just won't talk to that. <laughs> it is something that I deal with within myself. I have high functioning anxiety and, you know, I've shared with you guys the different things. So I don't need to get into that with you guys, but I feel like I have at least a knowledge of what to do. And then as a pastor, I want to share with you guys the things that I have learned over time. So a lot of the stuff that I've been teaching is stuff that I have learned trial and error because I didn't have those classes. I was busy doing other things, administration and pastoral stuff. So I was busy doing those things. So I didn't have the classes under my belt that Mandy has, which makes us a really good team to be able to share with you. She has the, she's like my professional on the mental health side of things of that side and I'm the professional on the spiritual side of things and together we make a really good team but you know like I said keep her in your thoughts and your prayers whatever you guys you know if you send good vibes for somebody then send her some good vibes whatever it is you know that we are a Christian based um, mental health check so of course I'm going to tell you guys to pray for her Keep her in your prayers because I think that that is really important. Keeping her in your prayers. We all need prayers, every one of us. And I pray for you guys every single day and so does Mandy. So, you know, as I've been watching and I've been seeing that our views have gone up considerably um, on this channel, I try always to be in prayer for everybody. I don't know who it is that has been watching our videos, but God does. And so that's important. So if you've been just watching our videos and you haven't subscribed yet or liked our content, then do it. Let us know what you would like to see. We would love to have that. All right. So here we go. I'm going to pray and then we're going to get started. Again, the teaching is called, I'm not okay, but I want to be. And then I'll share what today's teaching is again uh, after I've prayed. So, Lord, I just want to say thank you for every person that is catching this, um, that is watching this video. I just pray for your hand to be upon them. And every person that in the future will be watching these videos, I just pray for your hand to be upon them as well. And we just thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So like I said, I'm not okay, but I want to be is the teaching that we're using. And today's actual teaching is called, How Do We Become Okay Again? Hmm. So there's some good stuff in here. So let me give you guys some scripture references. So I'll give you these scripture references. Write them down right now if you can. Otherwise, you know, rewind the video, check it out and stuff like that so that you have them ready for yourself to be able to read through these uh, scriptures and then see I do share them in this um, teaching as well. So it's 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7. 1 Peter 1, 13, and then 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. All right, so here we go. Just going to the beginning. Okay, so again, the name of this teaching for today is How Do We Become Okay Again? Hmm. Okay, so let's, let's get into it. So this teaching says, How Do We Become Okay Again? We must prepare our minds for action by first acknowledging that we are not okay and that we need to do something about it. Okay, guys, before I even continue on this, this is on almost every single uh, help that you can think of. Okay, preparing yourself, preparing your mind, admitting that you have an issue, admitting that you have a problem. That's always the first step of everything. So like say for instance, Alcoholics Anonymous or uh, Drug Addicts Anonymous, which I don't know what that is called. Uh, I don't remember, but if you remember, please feel free to put it into the comments because I would I would love to know that. Like there's all kinds of different anonymous things or even if you're going to a an a self-help type of thing or you're watching a self-help type of thing, always the very first step is acknowledging 
that you have an issue. So with this saying that we must prepare our minds by uh, for action by first acknowledging that we are not okay and that we need to do something about it is like the first step in every kind of thing. So you know that the stuff that we're trying to teach you guys, we're trying to show you guys that in every single thing, yes, you have to acknowledge that you need direction or help or whatever it is um, that you need help with. And that is the first step in every single thing, including this. So keep, let's keep going, okay? Um, okay, when we don't take the time to acknowledge that we are not okay, we find ourselves running away from God instead of towards him. Okay, so yes, we find ourselves running away from God instead of towards him. Again, like I said, this is a Christian-based teaching. So we are, of course, talking that it's important for us to run towards God. Everything that I've been teaching you guys up to this point, showing you guys up to this point, is running towards God and asking him for help, asking him to show us things, right? So that's where we're going with this. We have to acknowledge that the situation uh, is overwhelming and we cannot handle it by ourselves. The message version, okay, so the message version, for those of you that don't know, is a specific Bible version, just like the NIV or the New King James or the King James version, whichever version that you are privy to or that you like the most. This happens to be a version, and it's called the message version. Now I'm going to share um, one of the scriptures. So 1 Peter 1.13 says that we have to roll up our sleeves and put our mind in gear. We have to take every thought captive to obey Christ. We must take control of what we allow our minds to dwell on. Okay, so now before I continue on with that, let me just remind you guys that that is exactly the kind of things that we have been talking to you guys all along. And even Mandy has shared that on her clinical side of things with mental health. We should never dwell or sit and ruminate or think on the things that are difficult for us or the struggles that we're in. Because what ends up happening in that position is that we end up like say for instance we're thinking about what we're depressed about well you can continue that depression absolutely absolutely continue that sadness continue that brokenness because you're just allowing yourself to to just dwell on that pain already that's there and continue so that's why we want to change our thought process and like it says here, take every thought captive in obedience to Christ and make it obedient to Christ. And Christ, like I said to you at the beginning um, of many times of our teaching, I've talked to you guys that, that Christ looks on you and he thinks about you. So the Bible actually says that, that um, he has thoughts for you that are beautiful, basically. This is Gigi's paraphrase because I don't have it sitting in front of me, but think about that. He loves you. And anything that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ for you is a lie, okay? And that's why we need to take those thoughts and make them, like, put them captive and make them obedient to Christ. And Christ says, that you are beautiful, that you are strong and courageous like that little uh, scripture saying says right there, that you are strong and courageous. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Like, think about that. Those are the things that we should be ruminating on or dwelling on or thinking on, not the sad things because what ends up is that the sad little thing may be this big, but it'll just completely explode in your thought process and you just end up not being able to have any control over yourself at all because you're just dwelling on such sadness. That's just one tiny example. So that's why that it is important that we should prepare our minds to become hopeful of what is to come and of who is to come meaning Jesus. Jesus is coming for us. He loves us that much. 
He wants to take care of us. He wants to just, you know, be there every step of the way for you. And like the Bible does say that he has come to give us life and that more abundantly. So living an abundant life does not mean sitting in and dwelling in the sadness. It just, it can't. Because how would you have a beautiful life or be able to press forward or propel yourself into a new place if you're just living in absolute sadness or dwelling in that sadness, right? All right, so let's keep going. Peter doesn't allow the early church to wallow in their current situation. And that still applies to us today, which is exactly what I've been saying, right? In order to shift our thinking, it's time for us to get to work, which is another thing of what I've been saying all along that we need to take ourselves, prepare our minds for all of the things that God has for us so that we're not dwelling in the brokenness, but we're dwelling in the greatness, the things that we can accomplish through God, right? So, you know, as we continue on with this, keep that in your thought process. Okay. So it says, in order to shift our thinking, it's time for us to get to work. As God's children, we know that we are in this world, but we are not of this world, right? Like we, you've probably heard this countless times that we're just travelers passing through and stuff like that, that we are, um, citizens of heaven and that is the truth we are citizens of heaven so we don't have to sit in the garbage that the enemy tries to you know put into us now the bible says that the devil is the god of this world so the world that we're living in right now he tries all the time and then the bible says that he goes around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour so he wants to eat you up he wants to kill you and the bible even says that he wants to kill steal and destroy you so think about all of those things so if his whole impetus and his whole goal is to destroy you then sure those are things that you are probably struggling with right now that's why we need to grasp and prepare our minds for what God has for us. And he has great things. All right, so we're going to keep going. Um, we are in this world, so it's okay to acknowledge that these trials are bothering us and weighing us down, okay? So it's okay for you to say that. That's why we always say to you, it's okay for you to go to a doctor and get a diagnosis. It's okay for that. You know, the stigma has come out of so many things. And I am not afraid to admit that the stigma has come out of, you know, a Christian religion and not all Christian religions are based around that, but there's a lot of them that have said, oh, you don't need drugs for that. You don't need medicine to help you through those things. You don't need antidepressants. This is just causing and completely pushing the stigma that we talk about all the time. It is not a healthy thing because if you go to the doctor, you get a diagnosis and you get a prescription that can help you through that, then you can absolutely get into the proper frame of mind so that you can help or ask God to help you through the things that are tearing you down. And I, to me, I think that's amazing that God would do that and that we can do that. We don't have to live in that brokenness. We don't have to be there. And I think that that is spectacular. All right. I just keep looking at the time on, on my little clock there and I'm seeing, wow, time is clipping by quickly. So I don't want to be that person that is wasting your day away forever kind of thing. So I just want you guys to be able to watch these things and learn something and use it, utilize it for yourselves. All right. So, okay. So here we go. We may not want to go through these challenges 
whoever wants to go through those challenges. I don't. I don't want to go through a challenge ever. Just like last week's teaching was about that, that, you know, who of us would want to volunteer for a trial? I wouldn't. Absolutely. So it's just like this is, you may not want to or go through these, these challenges, but you know, it can make a difference for you. Sometimes we have to go through a difficult time for us to realize that, wow, there is good stuff on the other side, right? All right. So, okay. So as I was saying here, but we have been called to represent Christ and to represent his kingdom, even in the midst of trials. Our desire is for him to be known through our work, our families, and our lives. It's all right to say that the trial hurts. So it's all right for you to say that. It's absolutely all right for you to say, wow, this is painful, but I know I need to do this in order to get there. So the trial may be you have to go to the doctor. You have to get a diagnosis. You have to start on the medication. And sometimes it doesn't always take effect immediately. Sometimes it's a few different medications later before you realize, okay, this is the one that works for me the best. And I feel the best. And I feel like I can actually accomplish what I need to accomplish. Okay, so that may be your trial that you have to go through, but you have to learn something. And then, uh, you know, how I had said, if you're in the midst of a trial, sometimes we have to pray and ask God to show us, well, what are we supposed to learn here? Because if we don't do that, we're just going to continue that cycle and we're going to continue going through the things that are not helpful for us. But we want to learn what is helpful for us, okay? So that's what we need to do. So here we go. And we're basically um, coming close to the ending of this teaching already. So our human reaction is real and has to be acknowledged. So we have to acknowledge that, you know, our lives have difficulties and we have pains and we have trials and we have difficult times. We have to acknowledge that. And that's okay too. It's okay to say that it hurts or that it's painful. Even after we acknowledge that we aren't okay, we still prepare our minds. We don't stay stuck in the way the world sees the trials we face. Hallelujah for that. You don't have to remain stuck in that. That, to me, that's a huge, huge, huge thing that we can just acknowledge that and say, hey, I don't have to sit in this. I don't have to. All right. The preparing of our minds gets us to move towards action, to move toward what we're called to do. Peter is aware that the people and the church are persecuted, but he doesn't allow them to stay stuck with the persecuted label. Okay, so we don't have to live with and stay in that label. So just because, for instance, for myself, just because... I've been diagnosed with MS doesn't mean that I have to live in that. Yeah, I struggle with it and I struggle with symptoms sometimes and I struggle with relapses and all of those things, but I don't have to live in that. I can live a full and healthy and happy life. I can and I know that and I am so excited inside to say that to you guys. Just like having anxiety, I've mentioned to you guys that I have anxiety. I don't have to live in my anxiety because I have learned some tools to help me through those things, right? Just like all of you guys can learn those things. All right, so let's let's continue on. Peter, or he shares, like I said, Peter, with them in 1 Peter 1, 6, which is one of the scriptures, again, that I shared earlier, that there is wonderful joy ahead, even though they must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that our faith is genuine. Hallelujah to that. So just remain faithful. And I know that is it's hard to remain faithful when you're in the middle of a trial. I know that. But that's where our faith, our prayers, all of those things can come in. And we can change our outlook on 
who we are, on what we're doing, what we're presenting to the world, what we're presenting to ourselves. We can change our outlook on all of those things. That is huge to me. Okay, these trials will show that our faith is genuine. Like I said earlier, there was still life or yeah, there was still life and leadership that had to happen during their suffering. So this is the church that, that we were talking about with Peter, okay? So they were going through trials. They were going through difficult things and stuff like that. But there was still leadership. There were still people that were trying to guide them and help them through this, even though they were going through the trials too. But we can still remain strong. We can still keep pushing to get out of these things, okay? Um, and there is still life and leadership that we are called to do today, no matter what trials we face. Peter tells us, or sorry, tells the early church and us today that it's time to roll up our sleeves because we still have work to do, which is exactly what I have been saying all along and exactly why we have been doing these teachings to show you guys that you can make it through. You do not have to live in your trial, okay? In the difficulty that you're going through, whatever it is. So go get a diagnosis from the doctor. Get medication if you need to, so that you can get your mind in order and not let the devil take you down, all right? All right, guys, that is the end of this specific teaching for today. If you are looking for help in any way, like you're looking to find a phone number or an email address or anything, check out our description box below because it's going to give you a ton of numbers that you can contact for help with your mental health. Or you could even contact me or Mandy or whatever through the... Um, little things that are in the description box. I, I give you our mental health check email address, or I also give you our Twitter contact, our Instagram contact, those types of things. So feel free to do that. We would love to hear from you. And the people in the phone numbers below that are listed below are North American, okay? But they would love to help you guys through the things that you need help with. And they have had training. They have had all of those things. So it's not just some Joe Blow off the street just trying to help people or talk to people. They actually know what they're talking about. And they can guide you to where you need to be. If it's another place or um, within your city, you can tell them, hey, I'm from such and such city or province or whatever, and they can help you find the right contacts. So that's huge, I think. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pray and then we're going to say goodbye for this week and just know that I love you guys. All right. So Lord, I just want to say thank you for every person that has watched this video and learned something from it. And if they haven't learned something from it yet, I pray that you would really pour it into them, Lord God, to show them the things that they can learn, that they are okay, that they are awesome, and that you have created them in your image and you have a destiny and a plan for their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. I love you guys so much. And remember, I continue to pray for you every single day. If you have a specific prayer request that you want, you can message us privately or email us or you can put it on the, the chats or the comments in this specific video. Whatever works for you the best. Love you guys. God bless you all and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.